if you're using an object relational mapper like Institute Framework, uh, what you will very often be doing is using the code first approach, where you write some C sharp code. So you have some models and you build a context class, and then you rebuild a database using that context. So maybe you call the method database dot ensure created, and then this method will trigger a rebuilding of a database. So behind the scenes, we can always generate SQL. So here I have some source code from a project that is using in framework. And inside the program, the CS file here, we're adding a database context. And then we're accessing the database context down here. Currently, we're just calling a method uh, named ensure created. Uh, but there is something that I want to show you right here. And that is the database can also generate the scripts to actually recreate the database as a normal SQL file. So I'll just show you really quick with a string bar db. And now I'll just log it here. And uh, now I'll run the API. So inside of the API folder, you can just use .NET run. And uh, if you scroll up here, you can see that uh, in this instance, we just have one table here in the database. That means if you can go one way and generate the SQL based on the context class here that you are creating using the code first approach, then surely you can also go the other way. So this is also what we call scaffolding. So I, I for instance, have a uh, much longer SQL script right here from a different project that I was working on. So what I'll do now is I'll add this SQL script here I'll just call it the uh, generates db.sql. And I will just paste this in here. So if I have a script here to uh, rebuild the database, what I'll do is I'll now use the scaffolding command. So before you can actually use the command, you need to actually install the CLI tool that allows you to use the command. So first of all, you should ensure that you can actually use the .NET CLI for the step that we're about to take. So write .NET and see what you get here. If you don't get that the command is found, it means you don't have the CLI installed correctly. Maybe you haven't added to your environment variables on your machine. But if you have it correctly installed, uh, you can get a list of all of the possible commands by writing .NET slash H, and it will list command called tool. And the tool command here is just to install a managed tool that extends the .NET experience. So the tool that we will be installing using the .NET tool command is EF. And EF is the Entity Framework tool. You can also find the exact installation on the .NET EF core tools reference. So if you paste this one in here, you will now have it installed. If you do have any problems with using the CLI, I recommend you follow the instructions clearly. So if you open up a new CLI and you check your installation using this command here, this is what you should get. So there's this little graphic here where it says EF and then there's a unicorn, of course. So the exact command that we'll be using is actually quite long because you can add some uh, options into the command. So that's why what I'll do is I'll make a file and uh, then I'll call it scaffold and I'll end it in .sh, and that's because I want to be able to just execute the file and not have to copy the file content and paste into the terminal. But you can also do that. That is totally valid as well. So I'll paste in the full command here. The first part up here is actually not a part of the command that we use. So you can delete this if you just want to be able to take the command, copy it, and paste it in somewhere you, you want to use it. But I'm going to let it stay here uh, because I want to be able to just run the file as it is and then it runs the entire content of the file. So we're using the .NET EF EB context scaffold command here. And then everything down here are the options. So the thing you must uh, change here, depending on your preferences, is the name of the database. So currently, I have a database running inside of a Docker container. Uh, you could also be using another DBMS, uh, but I'm going to use Postgres database inside of a Docker container. 
and I will make sure to leave the uh, compose file and all of the other source code that I'm using so that you can reproduce these results that I'm also having here. Um, but since I'm using this, I must also use the same name of the database. So currently I have just named the database testdb. So I'll go into my command here, make sure that it's also the name of the database here. User ID is test user, user password, test pass. So now this one here, depending on your DBMS, you will change this. If you're using SQLite, this will be different from you. Uh, if you're using Microsoft SQL Server, that will also be different. So change this depending on your DBMS. This one here refers to where the models, uh, so all of the tables, they will correspond to a model. Where should they be put? So I'm just specifying here that they should be put in a folder named models. This just refers to where the context should be put. And this refers to the name of the context. So you could also call it my DB context because I think that's what we named uh, the context in this example project. And uh, this one here refers to whether or not the configuration should be done inside of the context or inside of the program CS file up here. So I like to have my configuration up here. So that's why I specify no unconfiguring. And uh, you can also choose to have data annotations. That means that constraints will be put on the model and not inside of the context file. This one isn't very important for us. And force means that it will override if there are existing things. So what it's actually doing is it will connect to your database running here. That means if you already have your database running, so I have mine running right here inside of a Docker container, it will connect to that one. And then it will use that database to output C-sharp code. So I'm interested in getting a context and all of the models that I need because I already have a database. So I deliberately put this inside of my data access project. And the data access project is also the project that has dependencies to entity framework. And I want to add another dependency here called the Microsoft Entity Framework Core.Design. This is the package that you actually need in order to do the scaffolding. So I recommend that you copy this package reference in. So now we're ready to actually trigger the scaffolding, which means that I'll right click here and then I will run the scaffolding and I will go through a building phase. That means that your code needs to also be able to compile. If your code doesn't compile, then you will get an error right here. And uh, what we'll now get is the uh, models. So currently, we just have this super simple model. The model, of course, uh, one to one corresponds with this model here. So now let's try and uh, actually take our long SQL script here. So what you do is you take this SQL script here, and now you need to actually connect to your database. So you can use Rider for this by going into the, the uh, database explorer tool here and then just run all of this. So you can also just press Control A and then Control A Enter and it will run all of this. And now you should have all of these different tables out here. Uh, that means if you go and you scaffold your database now by clicking on this one, uh, now you will get this output here. So all of these uh, models, they will now be the models corresponding with the tables that we have in our much longer uh, database script. And we will also have a context file called mydbconsext. Uh, what you sometimes can uh, experience in case that you already have some things put into your context file that you manually adjust it, then if it overrides it, it will just create a new namespace for it, which is going to be the default namespace. So you might have to do and import. Uh, in my case, I'll just import all missing references across all of my different projects. And now this issue is resolved. So what I'll just show you now is the context that I use here, it has all of these different other entities. So if you want to do something like get all uh, doctors uh, to a list, you can easily do that. So why is the scaffolding an appealing strategy? Well, it's appealing because most people, they already know how to create a database using SQL. So they know how to create tables. But, uh, but actually, 
writing all of the C sharp codes to generate a database might be something that is new and challenging. So if you have already built a database, but you don't know how to get the SQL to actually reproduce the database, uh, you can right click here in Writer, and then there's something called SQL Generator here in the menu. And now this one can output all of the SQL. Um, so you can easily reproduce your database over again. You can also uh, click the one that is just named uh, Generate DDL to Clipboard, and uh, that one will generate a script that looks like this. You can always execute SQL uh, just like you normally would by just opening up a query console. And now inside of the query console, if you want to put in the reproduce script uh, for some reason, maybe you want to destroy everything and recreate the database, uh, you can just uh, write drop schema if exists and then the name of the schema. For me, that will be public. And then write cascade. Um, and then down here, write create schema public and just uh, run everything. Uh, now, if you refresh this one, and then you will have all of your tables back again. Uh, so if you have a database already, or if you can create a database using SQL, then you can use the scaffold command, just generate a database context with density framework, and also get all of the c -sharp models out. And then writing the context class and writing all of the constraints is something you can just completely overlook. Something that I think is really important to mention is that you shouldn't actually mess with the models that are being generated using the scaffold. Uh, the same as the context, you shouldn't be changing things manually in here because you should be able to reproduce it from a new scaffold command without having to go in and manually intervene. That's why sometimes if you want to add some behavior, let's say you want to add a behavior to some kind of doctor mod, well, then you should create a different model. And then you should transform your doctor object, which is the entity, into this different doctor mod. And then in here, you could do something like public void do something. And then if this one has some behavior, okay. Uh, but you shouldn't be putting behavior into a scaffolded model. 